Hello students, welcome to the EPG Patshala. I am Dr. Rashmi Sharma, Head of the Department OBNHR, Lal Bahadur Shastri Institute of Management, Delhi. Today we will learn the module Cross-Cultural Management. This module is from the paper Contemporary Issues in HRM and Future Trends. The learning outcomes from this model would be Diversity in the Workplace, Hofstede's Cultural Dimension Theory, Low Context Culture, High Context Culture, Lewis Cross-Cultural Communication Model. After completing this module, the students will be able to learn about the significance of cross-cultural management, study Hofstede's Cultural Dimension Theory and find out its significance in cross-cultural management and also learn about the low context and high context culture. Due to the advent in globalization, the corporate world is becoming more and more interrelated. People with different backgrounds, education and culture are expected to work together. This can sometimes lead to conflict in the organization. It is therefore imperative for managers to know about the basics and process of cross-cultural management. Diversity management is the process through which managers make everyone sensitive and aware of the needs and differences of others. It's about respecting and accepting the differences. Cross-cultural management is the practice of managing work teams so that the differences in culture, practice and preferences of consumers or customers in a global or international business context are considered and the performance of the team is not hampered by the differences between the various members of the team. In order to compete in a world that is no longer bound by geographical, corporates have now come to understand that they need to change and modify their methods of managing people. While intercontinental commercial transactions go back hundreds of years back, intercultural interactions are becoming increasingly important in today's world because with more and more people having access to wider and newer markets due to the new technology and we can see that the world is rapidly shrinking. The world is shrinking at an increasingly faster rate because of this wireless technology and communication technology. The interactions between people is becoming faster and faster and at the same time travel has become faster and easier. Therefore, it is important for people to know how to interact across different cultural contexts. The necessity of cross-cultural management as part of training or curriculum is not limited to business or managers only. It is also a requirement for many other professions. For example, Academicians that intend to work in cultural situations that are different from the ones they were brought up in must have effective communication skills to prevent the mistakes. Confusion and to remain respectful to those around them both at the personal and professional level. Good communication skills are necessary for any and every professional. Therefore, learning to communicate effectively across various cultural settings and circumstances have become vital in any field. There are different ways to categorize and define what is and what is not culture. Culture can be nationalistic, can be regional and the difference between national or regional culture would become apparent from when two people from two different parts of the same country or the world interact. Certain practices and behaviors that are considered impolite in some cultures are considered normal in many other cultures. Different ethnic or religious cultures can exist within a single nation or region as well and different subcultures can exist within those ethnic or religious cultures. In relations to human society, 
culture refers to the learned behavior, practices and point of view that are characteristics of a specific group of people. Generalization about culture can lead to stereotyping, such as the idea that all Americans are fat, rich people who eat junk food and watch lots of TV. This is stereotyping which is incorrect. However, some all-encompassing interpretations can be made about a specific culture sort of resorting to disparaging those stereotypes and these interpretations can have the subject of study for many generations of social scientists. Humans aren't the only animals that experience culture. Researchers have identified cultural traits that are present and prevalent even amongst group of animals such as chimpanzees who have dominance hierarchies in the social group. Human culture can be categorized in various ways such as national culture which can be seen in the different behaviors observed in between any two countries. Let's take a common example between India and Pakistan. The religious culture such as the differences observed between people of different religions like the Hindus, Muslims, Sikhs and Christians. Ethnic cultures such as the difference between the various tribes and castes in India. Other type of culture includes the subculture and culture based on factors such as gender and sexuality that also exists. A culture clash is a conflict between culture or a quarrel arising between two parties of two different beliefs, values and practices. Criminal transgressions and misbehavior often arise from cultural clashes. Poor handling differences between the different cultures can lead to rise in conflicts. Behavior and perception of the situation affect the likelihood of a resolution. For instance, Tolerance and patience can help diminish the problem, whereas disrespect and feeling of superiority provoke the situation and turn it into in discrimination, exclusion and even to the level of waging war. Let's understand what is the importance of diversity in the workplace. Diversity in workplace can refer to any characteristics that leads to differentiation between people. No two human beings are the same. These differences are a result of the culture that he have been brought up. Even within the same culture, people are different due to their upbringing, values and moral values. To managers, it is important to recognize the difference and to capitalize on them in order to get the most out of their employees. Effective management of organizational diversity can bring the organization a wide pool of skills, abilities and ideas. In an organization, the diversity can be divided into two levels, surface level diversity, deep level diversity. Surface level diversity is a diversity arising out of demographics that is gender, race, ethnicity age, disability, etc. These differences can be readily observed but they have little or no ability to reflect the thought processes of people but it gives rise to certain stereotypes. Deep level diversity refers to differences in values, personalities, work preference and thought processes. This kind of diversity becomes progressively important as people are better acquainted with each other. Let's understand Hofstede's Cultural Dimension Theory. Hofstede's Cultural Dimension Theory is an outline for cross-cultural dimensions developed by Geert Hofstede. It illustrates the influence of a society's culture on the ethics of its managers or members and how these ethics connect to behavior. Hofstede developed his original model between 1967 and 1973 while he was working for IBM. 
he surveyed more than 1 lakh IBM employees and established that managers and employees differ in five value aspects of national culture that is power distance, individualism vis-a-vis -vis collectivism, masculinity vis-a-vis -vis femininity, uncertainty avoidance, long term vis-a-vis -vis short term orientation. In 2010, Hofstede added a sixth dimension that is indulgence versus self-restraint. Power distance index refers to the extent to which the members of a society, organizations or institutions agree that power in organizations and institutions is distributed unequally. A high value of the index signifies that hierarchy is clearly recognized and implemented in society, whereas a low value of the index signifies that the society stresses on equality. As we can see from the graph given below, the high PDI and the low PDI have certain characteristics and some tips to be followed. For example, for low power distance index, the characteristics of an organization would be a flatter organization wherein supervisors and employees are considered almost as equals. The tips to manage the low PDI are delegate as much as possible, involve all those in decision making who would be directly affected by the decision. High PDI organizations are characterized by being centralized by nature, have complex hierarchies, large gaps in compensation, authority and respect. The tips to manage high PDI are acknowledge a leader's status. As an outsider, try to circumvent his or her power but do not push back explicitly. Be aware that you may need to go to the top for answers. Individualism vis-a-vis -vis collectivism. It is the degree to which people in a society are integrated into groups. In individualistic society, people prefer to act as individuals rather than as groups whereas in collectivist society, we have a stronger social framework and members of a group support each other. As shown in the diagram, High IDV and low IDV people have different characteristics. People with low individualism emphasize on building skills and becoming master of something. They work for intrinsic rewards and they maintain harmony. The tips to manage such people are suppress feelings and emotions that may endanger harmony, avoid giving negative feedback in public, and saying no can cause a loss of face unless it is intended to be polite. High IDV is referred to the characteristics of people who are placed high on people's time and need for privacy and freedom. They respect people's privacy and enjoy challenges and as an expectation of individual's reward for the hard work done. The tips to manage people in high IDV is to acknowledge their individual accomplishment, do not mix work life with social life and encourage debate and expressions of people's idea. Uncertainty Avoidance Index or UAI refers to the extent to which ambiguity and uncertainty threaten a society and tries to avoid it. Societies with a high score in this index have a high level of anxiety towards the unknown. A lower degree in this index shows more acceptances of differing thoughts, ideas and ambiguity. Low UAI people are characterized by openness to change or innovation. They have less sense of urgency and are open-ended. 
the tips to ensure and manage such people are that people can remain focused but do not create too much of structure titles are less important so avoid showing off your knowledge or experience to such people respect is to be given to all those who can cope under all circumstances people with high uncertainty avoidance index are characterized by a conservative rigid and structured approach they are expressive and allowed to show their anger or emotions whenever required the tips to manage such people are be clear and concise about expectations and goals and set clearly defined parameters or unspoken rules or cultural expectations that you need to learn masculinity vis-a-vis femininity that is mas according to hofstede in this dimension masculinity is the preference in society for traditional masculine roles of achievement heroism assertiveness power control and material rewards for success as compared to treating men and women as equals in masculine society there still is a recognized gap between male and female values let's understand how the low mas score vis-a-vis the high mas score differ with the low masculinity vis-a-vis femininity score the characteristics of such people are that they are relationship oriented and consensual they focus more on the quality of life while people with high mas score have strong egos feeling of pride and importance attributed to status money and achievement are very very important tips to manage people low on mas are that success is more likely to be achieved through negotiation collaboration and input from all levels whereas people high in mas are required to be differentiated on the basis of gender role people are motivated by precise targets that you give and also by being able to show that they have achieved them either as a group or as an individual long term orientation vis-a-vis short term orientation that is lto this dimension associates the connection of the past and the current and the future action or challenges the short term orientation characteristics are that people will have strong conviction they tend to oversell themselves and value and rights are emphasized tips to handle such people are that sell yourself to be taken seriously people are less willing to compromise as this would be seen as a weakness flattery empowers organizations or people with long term orientation have a characteristics of education and thrift as a positive value modesty virtues and obligations are emphasized tips are to behave in a modest way avoid talking too much about yourself people are willing to compromise yet this may not always be clear to the outsiders so this is certainly so in a culture that has a high score on pdi indulgence versus restraint that is ind indulgence is defined as the degree to which society allows relatively free gratification of basic and natural human desires and to enjoy life and restrain it to define as the degree to which social norms govern the gratification of basic human needs people in high restraints are pessimistic more controlled and rigid tips to handle them or being handled are avoid making jokes when engaged in formal session instead be professional only express negativity about the world during informal meetings people in high indulgence are the ones who are optimistic for them freedom and importance of speech is important they focus on their personal happiness tips to handle them is don't take life too seriously 
encourage debates and dialogues, prioritize feedback and emphasize flexible working and work-life balance. Low context culture was first discussed and defined by anthropologist Edward T. Hall in 1976. Culture that communicates information in a manner that relies mainly on words communicates information that is they take a more direct and explicit approach in a low context culture. This type of culture is not high on contextual elements of communication that is the speaker's tone of voice or body language. Communication is expected to be straightforward and precise and the entire message must be effectively conveyed through the use of words. The rule of communication must be explained to those who are not familiar with the culture. Low context culture are individualistic by nature. Individual achievements are much more valued than group accomplishments. Members of low context cultures are independent of one another and are expected to look out for themselves with the exception of family. Some common characteristics of a low context culture includes emphasis on logic and facts, words are more important than body language, verbal messages are explicit, direct and concise, tasks or goals are more important than relationships, knowledge is explicit, visible and can be easily conveyed to others, primary method of learning is through explicit direction and instructions, decision and action focus on the goal and dividing responsibility. Some examples of low context cultures are the USA, Canada, Germany and Switzerland. High context culture was first discussed by anthropologist Edward T. Hall in 1976 in his book titled Beyond Culture. Culture where the greater part of communication takes place through the use of contextual elements that is body language, a person's status and tone of voice as compared to verbal are called as high context cultures. Members of high context cultures usually have close relationships that last for an extended period of time. As a result of these years of close interacting with one another the member of these cultures know the rules, how to think, how to behave, so the rules do not have to be explicitly stated. This plethora of unsaid rules of high context culture makes it difficult to navigate for those who do not understand the culture's unwritten rules. Some common characteristics of high context cultures include primarily use non-verbal methods to relay meaningful information in conversations such as facial expressions, eye movement and tone of voice. The situation, people and non-verbal elements are more important than the actual words that are communicated. People are comfortable standing close to each other. The preferred way of solving problems and learning is in groups. Members of the culture place emphasis on interpersonal relationships. Trust must be developed before business transactions can begin. Some examples of high context culture include Japan and other countries located in Asia, Brazil and other countries located in South America. The Lewis cross-cultural communication model wherein culture refers to learned behaviors, practices and points of view that are characteristics of a specific group of people. Our behavior is influenced by our culture and is learned over a period of time. There are many factors that influence our behavior such as religious upbringing, ethnicity, generation gap, class and gender programming, education, social culture and the professional ethics we have been taught and accepted. All these aspects influence our behavior 
and a variation in any of them will lead to a change in our own behavior. While these factors might look absolutes that are actually very very subjective by nature that depends on the culture we have been brought up in. When we travel or move to another country, the social norms that we are so used to may not necessarily be the norm over there. The Lewis Cross Cultural Model of Communication explains the difference between various cultures in terms of how people from different cultures vary in their concept of time and space. Handling the interpersonal distance, silence and eye contact and how their communication styles are reflected in the language patterns that they use, how they view the truth as absolute or negotiable that is modifiable according to the situations. What are their values, attitude and the world views are. In this module we have learned that cross-cultural management is the practice of managing work teams so that the difference in culture are considered and the performance of the team is not hampered by the difference between the various members of the team culturally. It is therefore becoming increasingly important to study and understand the significance and techniques of cross-cultural management. Good communication skills Having the ability to communicate effectively and knowing the differences in culture that is low context and high context culture are the cornerstones of cross-cultural management. We have also learned the six dimensions given by Hofstede for the culture values that is the power distance index that is PDI, individualism versus collectivism that is IDV, Uncertainty Avoidance Index that is UAI, Masculinity Vis-a-vis -vis Femininity that is MAS, Long-Term Orientation Vis-a-vis -vis the Short-Term Orientation that is LTO, Indulgence Vis-a-vis -vis 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 Restraint and we have also learned about their significance in the cross-cultural communication. We have differentiated between the low context culture and the high context cultures and looked at the prime characteristics between these two cultures. We have looked at the Lewis cross cultural communication model of communication and has observed how different cultures act in different situations. Thank you.